I'm going to introduce you to Programmatic UI in UIKit. We're going to build this project by first deleting the storyboard and launching everything in just code, and then building this simple screen where we add a button, tap it, and navigate to a new one in a navigation controller completely in code. So let's get started. All right, let's create a brand new Xcode project. Uh, create an app on iOS, hit next. Name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it Programmatic UI. Okay, make sure your interface is storyboard, not Swift UI, because we are going to be in UIKit. Language Swift, don't worry about core data or tests or anything like that. Hit next, save it wherever you like, and I'm going to hold option, click on the green button there to make everything bigger. Now, let's click on main storyboard. We are going to delete this and launch the app programmatically, but I want to show you something to give you context on what we're going to be doing when we build this in code. Do command shift L to open up your library, grab a filled button, drag it and add it to the view. You'll see we'll do this in code as well. And I'm just gonna add some random constraints just to show you how what we do in this graphical user interface that is a storyboard, we do the same exact thing in code, but seeing it graphically will help you connect the dots and understand what we're doing in code a little bit better. So we just added the view to our view controller. And then you can see maybe you want to uh, horizontally center it in container, or vertically center it in container, add two constraints. So we're adding constraints just through this uh, graphical user interface. And maybe you want to make it a width of, you know, 200 and a height of 50. Add two constraints. And that's how you add constraints on the storyboard, which again is the graphical user interface. We're going to do all that same stuff just in code. All right, now that you have that context, Right click on your main.storyboard, hit delete. This is step one of getting rid of it. Move the trash, cool. Now, if you try to run your app right now, you're gonna get a bunch of crashes because in our project here, it still thinks there's a storyboard. So we need to clean some stuff up here in our P list. So click the info button right here. Here is our P list. You'll see main storyboard file base name, delete that. Now there's another one that's a little buried. So if we search in our project, hit the search up here, type in storyboard. Click on our plist where it says UI scene storyboard file. There you go, storyboard name, main. Hit the minus button to get rid of that. So to sum that up, there's two places in your plist you need to get rid of the main.storyboard. You can do that by searching storyboard here. And then obviously you want to delete the main.storyboard file. So we don't have a storyboard. Now we need to tell the app how to launch it without a storyboard. For that, we're going to go into our scene delegate. And let me make my code bigger here so you can see it. So quick explanation, what a scene is, is a scene is a window of your app. And I believe scene delegate was introduced in iOS 13. And a quick explanation, before uh, the iPad had multitasking where you could have multiple apps up at the same time, right? Your iPhone can only show one app. We had an app delegate because there was only one window for your app, that was it. Once the iPad had the ability to open up two different apps on the same window and you could have two different instances of a same app running side by side, well now we had to introduce what's called a scene. So we're gonna tell our scene to launch our app. A quick disclaimer before we dive into this code, the main lesson here is gonna be in a little bit when we add the button, add that navigation controller, add the constraints programmatically, that's the main lesson of the video. Launching your app without storyboard is kind of a necessary step, and it might be a little confusing, but don't be alarmed, you will only ever have to do this once in your project and that's it, whereas the lesson where we add the button, the navigation controller, that's what you're gonna do over and over and over again in a programmatic UI project. So just bear with me for the next minute while we do this. And if you're a little lost, don't worry about it. The main lesson is coming up. So the first order of business, we'll make this a little bigger even. We need to get our scene. So right now we do guardlet. We're not naming it. So we'll say window scene. This is, we're just giving it a name here uh, because it is gonna return our window scene because we're gonna use this in the code below. We need to get our window and that equals UI window and from a frame and it's gonna be window scene dot coordinate space dot bounds. Basically, this just gives us the bounds of our scene, like the whole, the whole view of our, our specific scene that we're launching. And again, a scene is an instance of your app and it's now called a scene because you can have the same app side by side you know, on your iPad. So we got our window. Now we need to set our window, uh, window dot window scene <laughs> equals to window scene. That's the window scene we got back here. Again, if you're confused, this doesn't make sense. Don't worry about it. This is not the main lesson. And now we need to tell our window what our root view controller is. Window.root view controller equals view controller. And that view controller is this view controller right here. And in fact, to really drive this point home, I'm going to right click on the word view controller, hit refactor, rename. And we're going to rename this view controller to first screen. And hit the little plus button up here on line two to update the comment. You see the file name is also being updated. 
Cool. Again, this is just to not confuse you with just a generic view controller. So here we have our first screen. So back to the scene delegate, we want our root view controller, which again is the first thing the app shows to be first screen. And then the final step we have to do here is window.make key and visible. Now, this little code, again, might have been confusing, might have been over your head, that's fine, but this just launches the app to the first screen without having the storyboard, because the storyboard is normally the entryway into the app. So to make sure we uh, are seeing this, let's do view.backgroundcolor equals dot system mint, just to, you know, when we launch the app, make sure we are definitely seeing this. So run your app to test that we are indeed deleting the storyboard, launching the app successfully, with all code, no storyboard at all. And there we go, there's our mint background. We are seeing the first screen. Okay, so that's step one, storyboard gone. Now let's start building our UI. We're adding the button and we can tap the button to navigate to a new screen. So stop running this. The first thing we need is an instance of a button. So we'll say let's next button, because we're calling it next button because we're gonna tap it and go to the next screen, equal a new UI button. So that's just a, a generic blank UI button. We're going to customize it with all of our stuff here, you know, constraints. We're going to configure it how we want here in a second. But when the UI view controller initializes, we have a blank button. So now we're going to create a function that we're going to call in view to load to basically customize our button. Funk setup button. And the first thing you got to do in programmatic, this is very important. Just like when we dragged the button from our library onto the storyboard and added it to the view controller, we need to do view.add sub view. And what view do we want to add? We want to add the next button. So again, in code, this is the equivalent of us dragging and dropping a button onto the view controller in storyboard. Now let's start adding some uh, customizations to this button. So we'll say next button dot configuration equals dot filled. If you remember on the storyboard, we had like gray button, plain button dot filled. This is a specific Apple style. I did a whole video on iOS 15 buttons. That's when this was introduced. I'll link to that in the description. You can check that out, but we are gonna use those. I won't go too deep down that rabbit hole. Again, feel free to watch that video, but we're gonna start configuring our button, which is determining how it looks. So we wanna give our next button dot configuration dot background uh, color equals dot system pink. You can make it whatever color you like. I'm gonna make more space here. So my code's up top. Say next button dot configuration dot title equals next. Okay, so that's our basic button. Again, background color pink and title next. But I wanna get to the task at hand and adding constraints and constraining this button. Because at the moment, right now, well, let's make sure we call this in view to load, by the way. We'll call setup button. That way we actually run all this code. I can get rid of my background system mint. That was just to test it. And we can get rid of this comment as well. So the first thing you need to do, and you always need to remember this, is you need to do next button dot, you can start typing TAMIC, T-A-M-I-C, because it's very long, translates auto resizing mask into constraints. Essentially what this is saying is use auto layout. So you wanna set that to false, and you have to do this for every UI element. Keep that in mind. If you don't do that, it's not gonna line up properly. So now what we need to do, just like we did in the storyboard when we manually added our constraints, right? We said center vertically, center horizontally, uh, height of 50, width of 200. All that we did in the graphical user interface of the storyboard, we're just gonna type that out in code. So say next button dot center X anchor. Now these anchors, this is where all the different constraints come in. So center X anchor, center Y anchor, Again, that's centering it on the x-axis and the y-axis. You can do dot leading anchor. That's the leading constraint, the trailing constraints. All the constraints you can do on the storyboard have a version here in code. Of course, I'm not gonna run down all of them. That would take forever. But just remember, anything you do in storyboard, you can do here in code. So the first thing we wanna do is write the center x anchor. And now we wanna add the constraint equal to, you can see we can do equal to with a constant. So that is how you can, you know, if this was the leading anchor, you can add a padding of 20 onto it. So you can experiment with all these different types of constraints, but for this specific example, we're gonna do equal to. And again, all this stuff in code, there's an equivalent to storyboard. So I think a good exercise is you practice in storyboard and then try to rebuild what you built in code and kind of use the storyboard as a guide to help you learn the code version. So we'll say equal to views.center x anchor. And the thing with constraints in code is you have to do is active equals true for every single constraint. You have to activate that constraint. So now we've added our center x anchor constraint. Now, adding dot is active to true to every single constraint, a little bit tedious, but I did wanna show you that you do have to activate them. There's a way to create a group of constraints that activate all together, so you don't have to dot type dot is active equals true after all of them. So to show you that, I'm gonna delete this dot is active is true, and we're gonna create our ns layout constraint dot activate, 
and then this takes an array of constraints. So we'll hit return, give us our empty array, put that on a new line, and here's where we're gonna start populating that array with all of our constraints. So you see nslayoutconstraint.activate, pass an array of constraints, which you're gonna see we're gonna create right here. So the next one we're gonna create is next button dot center y anchor dot constraint is equal to view dot center y anchor because we want it centered within the view. Now, of course, if you wanted this centered based on another button on the screen, you would do that button rather than view dot center y anchor. And then now we did next button dot, oh, there needs to be a comma here because this is an array. Items in an array need to be separated by a comma. So next button dot width anchor dot constraint now, equal to constant. You see, we're not gonna set this equal to the same thing as another view. We wanna actually pass in a constant because we wanna give it a number. And you can see all the different variations that you can do here. So I said, I'm not gonna go through every one of them because it's a lot, but we'll do equal to constant. And our width was 200, right? That's what we set on the storyboard. And then next button dot height anchor dot constraint equal to constant. We gave it a height of 50. So now when we run this, we should see our basic button on the screen in the constraints that we want. There you go. There's our next button on the screen. So by giving it a configuration dot filled, it automatically gave it the corner radius and everything you need. And the view dot add sub view is what put it on there. Then we added all of our constraints that made it look how it does, right? It's centered horizontally, centered vertically, width of 200, height of 50. So that is adding a basic view. Now let's work on the navigation, right? Because we have this in a navigation controller where when we tap next, we go to the next screen. Stop running it. So before we can navigate to a new screen, we actually need that new screen to exist. So in your programmatic UI folder, right click, new file, do a Coco Touch class, hit next. We want this to be a view controller, but we're gonna name it first screen. Make sure you're, or I'm sorry, not first screen, second screen. Make sure it's the subclass UI view controller in Swift, hit next, save it into the project, hit create. Cool, now we have second screen. And again, just to prove we are on our second screen, we're gonna do view dot background color equals dot system mint. Again, just to make sure we're going into the second screen, delete all these comments, we don't need that. Okay, I'm gonna drag this up here just for organization. And then now, if we go to back to our scene delegate, when we were telling it what screen to launch first, the way a UI navigation controller works is I like to compare it to a deck of cards. It holds a stack of UI view controllers and you either add a view on top of the stack and when you hit the back button, you're taking a view off the stack. But just think of it as a stack of view controllers. We'll illustrate that more in a second. But the first thing we need is a navigation controller. So we'll say let navigation controller equals, we'll initialize a, a new UI navigation controller. And you see that takes in a root view controller. So what is the first view in our stack? Well, it's gonna be first screen, just like we had down here. And now instead of our root view controller on the whole app where when it launches, we don't want it to launch the first screen. We wanna launch our UI navigation controller, which is holding our first screen. So switch out first screen with navigation controller. And you know what we could have done? Whatever, we'll save some time. Instead of creating a variable and doing that, uh, we can just cut that and paste that there and just save some code there. Okay, back to our first screen here. Let's add some uh, stuff in our view to load because we want our navigation controller to show the name in a large title of the view. So we'll say title equals first screen. And if you notice when we run this, our background is black, it's not white, like we're not in dark mode. So that's because we need to give our view the uh, background color. So view dot background color equals dot system background. Just, you know, if it's light mode, be white. If it's dark mode, be black. So now when we run it, we see our navigation title here up first screen. Cool, but we want the new modern look, right? We want the, the big navigation title. So to do that, we can do navigation controller dot navigation bar dot prefers large titles equals true. Now when we run it, we should see our navigation uh, set up great. First screen, and when we hit next, we want this to go to the next screen. So let's take care of that. All right, back in our first screen code here in setup button, we need to add an action to our button to do something when we tap it. We can do it before our constraints here. We'll do next button dot add target, hit return. So adding target basically adds an action, right? So the target is going to be self, which is our view controller. The action, now this needs to be a function that runs when we tap it. But before we build that, let's make the UI control event dot touch up inside, which is basically a normal tap. Okay, so back to this selector. We need to create a function to move to the next screen when we tap it. And because this is a selector, it needs to be marked at objc func go to next screen. 
and we'll say let next screen equals, we'll create a new instance of second screen. So here we are, we're creating a second screen and let's give next screen dot title equals second screen. We're telling the navigation controller what to show in the big letters up top. We want this to be called second screen. And then we call navigation controller dot push view controller. View controller we want to push is next screen. That's the screen we just created right here. So we're pushing a second screen on top of the stack. Remember the UI navigation controller, it's like a deck of cards, right? It holds a stack of UI view controllers, screens essentially. And by pushing a new view controller on top of that stack, that is the screen that's gonna show. And then when we hit the back button, we are popping that view controller off the top of that stack to show the first screen, right? Popping the second screen off, we don't want that anymore, shows the first screen. When we go to the next screen, we push the second screen on top of the stack, so that's what we see. So that is going on in the UI navigation controller. And this is how we do it programmatically. So animated is true. So now in selector, we can do hashtag selector, and you see it takes in an OBJC method, and that will be go to next screen. And we don't need those parentheses. Do a command B to make sure everything's good. Build succeeded. Cool, our navigation controller should be functioning. Before we run it, let's give a quick recap. So when you add a, any view to your view controller programmatically, make sure you do view.addSubView. You can configure it however you like. This is just styling it. You know, it's a whole different world of building UI. Style it however you like. And then on our buttons, we have to add a target. We have to tell it what function to run when we tap it. And then in order for the auto layout to work on the screen for the button to be where you want it to be, you have to add your constraints, just like we did in Storyboard, except you're typing them out programmatically. And make sure you always do translates auto resizing mask into constraints equals false, so you use auto layout and it'll look how you want. Now, you may be thinking, this is a lot of code for what was very simple on the Storyboard. And that is very true when a screen is a simple screen. Like we just have a button on the screen. but once the screen gets a lot more complex, you will find code a lot easier to understand and navigate. Not to mention, code is a lot more reusable, creating reusable components, right? It's very hard to copy and paste something from the storyboard on one screen to another screen. It's just, you'll, you'll find once the project gets more complex, you'll be able to move faster by using code than storyboard. That's why I do think it's good to uh, learn programmatic UI. And if you like this lesson, you wanna go deeper into programmatic UI, I have an entire course called GitHub Followers where we build an entire app, all programmatic UI. So check that out if you're interested. So now let's run it and we should be working. First screen, cool, next. Second screen, right, we did Mint to show that and back to the first screen. So like I said, UI navigation controller is holding the first screen in a stack. We hit next. It pushes the second screen on top of the stack. Great. Now when we hit back, we pop the second screen off to go back to the first screen. And we did all of that programmatically. 